The regulatory functions of plasma membranes are carried out by a diversity of membrane proteins. Most are integral, transmembrane proteins, with specialized shapes that perform specific functions in the cell. They're scattered throughout the entire plasma membrane. Ion channels are unique proteins in that they contain a pore, an open tunnel that passes through the length of the protein. The pore is selective for certain ions, either positive cations or negative anions, to pass into or out of the cell. For example, there are individual channels for sodium, potassium, and calcium ions, where the protein regulates the transport of only one specific ion. Some of these proteins can be gated channels, which means a portion of the protein acts as a gate that can open or close based upon the charge of the cellular environment. Carrier proteins transport larger chemicals like glucose or amino acids across the membrane by either pumping the chemicals into the cell or exporting them out. These proteins don't have a pore or a tunnel. They instead bind to the specific molecule to be transported and then change shape. The shape-shifting action pumps the molecule through the length of the protein across to the other side of the membrane. Receptor proteins form temporary bonds with ligands, specific messenger molecules such as hormones or neurotransmitters that convey information to the cell. The ligand binds to the receptor protein but is not moving through it like in the channels and carriers. Instead, it triggers a chain reaction of events like a metabolic pathway such as protein synthesis or some cellular action. The ligand is the messenger, which knocks on the membrane's door and delivers a message to the receptor that the cell will respond to. There is a unique match between the receptor and its ligand, similar to how a key fits into a specific lock or how two jigsaw puzzle pieces fit together. Receptors have very specific shapes and can only bind to a certain ligand so the information is clearly conveyed to the cell. We've learned that enzymes are proteins that act as catalysts, which carry out specific functions for the cell and help speed up reaction rates. Substrates are the reactants in an enzyme-catalyzed reaction that bind to the enzyme's active site and make products through decomposition or synthesis reactions. Rather than being scattered through the ECF or cytoplasm like other enzymes, these enzymes are embedded in the membrane, like tools on a workbench, producing product at an incredibly fast rate, making cellular work extremely efficient. Linker proteins do what their name suggests, linking or connecting protein to protein, membrane to membrane, or cytoskeleton proteins like actin microfilaments or keratin intermediate filaments within the cytoplasm to the membrane. Linkers are major attachment proteins that give the cell lots of strength and durability. They help form cellular junctions, binding cell membranes to other cell membranes within tissues to help hold them together. Cell identity markers are types of membrane proteins that include the glycoproteins. Glyco refers to the branching chains of carbohydrates that are attached to these proteins. Cell identity markers act as cellular fingerprints scattered across the membrane surface that give the cell its unique identity. MHC proteins are another type of cell identity marker, where MHC stands for Major Histocompatibility Complex. Histo refers to tissue, and these proteins play a role in tissue compatibility. If an organ is rejected in a transplant surgery, it's usually because there is a mismatch between the MHC proteins of the organ donor and the recipient. 
Cell identity markers are also used in the immune system to detect pathogens such as bacteria and parasites. They are able to determine friend from foe, or self from non-self, by recognizing that the pathogen's antigen proteins are different. The diversity found in the marker's chemical structures is what creates a tremendous variety of these proteins. We all have our own unique type of cell identity marker chemistry. Are cell membranes completely permeable, open to any chemical wanting to come into the cell? Are they able to freely release chemicals from inside the cell to the outer extracellular environment? Are they permeable and porous like this sponge, allowing chemicals to easily move in and out without regulation? Well, cell membranes are a compromise between complete permeability and impermeability. If cells were impermeable, they wouldn't be able to take in the nutrients they need or the respiratory gases like oxygen they require. They would die very quickly. Cell membranes display the property of selective permeability or semi-permeability. With the help of the phospholipid bilayer, and the various membrane proteins like ion channels and carriers. Membranes are able to select what the cell needs, regulating passage of materials through the cell, and are able to keep unwanted materials out of the cell.